Previously on Travel Girls. My boyfriend, he sent me an email telling me that it was over. <laughs> We're in Paris. Oh my god. I just spoke French to him. Stacy can be a little bit prima donna ish. 10 euros per meal. Are you freaking kidding me? They're just sitting there. We literally had to give them things to say. We got the two of the bitsiest blondes I've ever met going, ew, where can I catch another bag for me? I just don't think that's good enough. beginning to settle in at their new locations and it's work as usual with tasks delivered. It's a task. We're shopping! We are with our money. You would be required to deliver three versions of a piece to camera altering your style to suit three different audiences. Galleries Lafayette, you know what? I've never been there. Kieran Heather, meet your producers at 6am in the hotel foyer at 6am. You'll experience something fishy. Oh no. 6 a.m. For the second day in a row, the girls aren't up on time. The alarm never went off. If the crew can set an alarm and be ready, you have to wonder why the girls can't. Did you sleep in? Yeah. I don't know how, but they're getting worse. The crew is furious as they are forced to leave late yet again. If I had my way, I think both of them should be eliminated. The girls' unprofessional manner is pushing the crew to the edge of their sanity. <laughs> they are driving me crazy. <laughs> Can you see it, Ma? In Rome, the girls are looking to get in touch with their spirituality with a visit to St Mary's of the Angels and the Martyrs Basilica. Oh, nice. Roman baths, Michelangelo was responsible back in the 1500s for redesigning it into a church. Um, I think, like, I've never seen anything like this before. I know, it's so many little details. is shopping, but filming in public places can be problematic, especially when you don't speak the language. The team needs to be still with some guerrilla style filming. Drama inside the galleries in Lafayette. We're not actually supposed to film inside shopping centres, so we had to do this very sort of surreptitious, sneaky kind of thing. Carolyn and I ended up finding a tiny little nook between two stores. Carolyn was backed up into a change room to do um, my piece to camera on the galleries in Lafayette. Paris is famous for many things, not least of all its shopping. And the best place to do it? Galleries Lafayette, which is the largest department store in the whole of Europe. That stunning 1900 stained glass dome above me is so fine it's classified as an historical monument. And at least once a day, models parade up and down the store's own catwalk in the most popular fashion show in town. We got a lot of dodgy glances from security. By the time someone asked us, you know, what we were doing, that kind of thing, we finished and we were like, oh, we, we were just leaving. Excuse us. The girls succeed in the stealth mission and get the shot. But Caroline isn't confident in her footage and turns to produce a poll for his professional opinion. So you're happy with this camera you got now? Yeah, look at to me. What do you think? Well, but in terms of the shots that I got today, I'm not happy. Uh, the camera person is pride in my work. That's not where I choose to be, but we had no other choice when we were inside. And they looked bad. 
and I told Paul they were bad and he said they look fine and we don't have time to do it again. I thought the, the shot was better than the shot we could get out here because the shot had the dome in it, it looked nice. If we wanted to get it 110% we just wouldn't get it done so we just have to go with what we've got and make the best of what we have. All right, let's keep going. Let's roll. All right and rushed me off and I'm disappointed with them. And that means just shoot it and keep moving. Um, I know Caroline's a bit, you know, I'm not sure she feels the same way, but um, just there's not enough time in the day, we just have to keep moving. <laughs> Kiji Fish Markets is one of the biggest markets in the world. The hub of activity even requires its own traffic controllers. Hello. <laughs> the girls have only just woken up, but they will need their wits about them to not get run over. with over 400 different types of seafood on offer. If only Kira and Heather would keep their hands off. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> it's like, find me, find me, I'm cheap. I'm wearing a white coat. Despite being warned of something fishy, yeah. Kira chooses fashion over practicality and will pay the price. Fish blood. Oh, yuck, I just got blood all over my coat. And, 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 and. Seeing as my jacket is now ruined. Ruined jackets aside, Kira's task is to find the poisonous puffer fish, but the language barrier is going to prove a problem. I don't know how to ask. How do you say puffer fish? Do you know where to find puffer fish? No? Do you know blowfish? You go find it out Because they might know hello, so you don't. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Do you know where to find blowfish? Yeah. You you look for blowfish. Yeah. Blowfish. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know about the fish? Realising they may never find the elusive puffer fish, Jala reworks the script. Do you want to just try that? Yeah. 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 One of the fish that you can find at the fish markets is the puffer or blowfish, which, believe it or not, has enough poison in one of them to kill over 30 people. I've been trying to find one all morning and it doesn't seem to be around. Trekking through the fish markets. One thing, don't ever wear white if you're going to come and check this place out. <laughs> For once, Kira gets her piece out first take. The roles have reversed and Heather is tongue-tied. People call it... The Tsukiji markets are the largest markets in Tonio. Tonio. They're known as the largest markets in the world. Fuck, I can't do right. this. That's the tuna. That's the chicken of the sea. Yep. Please, my dog. Eventually, the girls have seen enough blood and guts. And after all that, you can come here and get a nice sushi breakfast. That's yes, what we do sell. Not really that hungry. <laughs> Back in Paris, things aren't all rose-coloured glasses. <laughs> Susie and Stacey became fast friends at the beginning of the show, but the friendship is beginning to show some strain. She's quite pissed off at the moment because we were walking around. Are you checking the background to see if she's coming? Cool. <laughs> we were walking around um, the Galerie de Lafayette. 50% off boots. <laughs> cool. Um, which way do I go now? and uh, Carolyn said to follow her. And so I jumped in line behind Carolyn and off we went. And we turned around at one point and Stacy had completely disappeared, um, possibly attracted by some shiny object, and came back downstairs and waited for like half an hour and Paul ended up going back in there and finding her, but she's well pissed, basically. <laughs> she's very happy. Come to find out, once I arrived in Paris, Paul handed me an envelope. Inside was my podium and the envelope only contained 170 euros. It's 170 that I have to survive on for six days. 
Stacy's been giving me the shits a little, just a little. I mean, she's cool and all, <clears throat> but you know, the whinging about the money, just that it's a bit, it's a bit much. I'm really upset about that. Um, not treated, being treated even as equal to the girls, even though I'm the host of the show. I had to buy lunch today to make me feel better, and um, she didn't want to catch a bus because she didn't want to walk so far. And, <sighs> and I think it's just a bunch of dog shit. The pressure's really, I mean, come on. Just, you know, toughen up a little. So we need to get to the Louvre. Just have someone with the Louvre. The next destination is the Louvre, which will be the location for Stacey's hostings. But she's still complaining. My hands are frozen. Do you want me to just come by and switch the gloves? No, I don't want cheap gloves. No, no, I'm cold. Gonna, it will help. I need some real gloves. Uh, today, Stacey has um, been kind of difficult to work with. Uh, she's been very vocal about how she feels about the cold and that kind of thing. I miss Thailand. I miss Thai food. <laughs> The Thailand doesn't have to move, so I'll put up with it. I'll put up with the cold, I'll put up with the cheese and the bread and the pasta. Okay. We're all freezing, you know. Um, she's kind of holding us up because she's complaining about the cold so much. As usual, Stacy is only thinking of herself. Although everyone is freezing, Stacy believes her comfort is the only concern. You might have guessed that I'm standing in front of the Louvre the world's biggest palace and museum, built in the 13th century and now contains 30,000 pieces Can you of drop your hood, please? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It's freezing. I'm, like, not wanting to move an inch. Susie, can you please be Stacey's airhead? <laughs> Sorry to do that to you, but I kind of need someone there and just walked off. Fuck, it's cold. I don't think that's anyone else's fault, so we shouldn't have to sit through her complaining that. Back in Rome, Natalie faces the camera. The largest and most famous fountain in Rome, and possibly the world, is the Trevi Fountain. And you also notice that people are throwing coins into the fountain. You'd be wise to do this, because one coin means that you're going to return to Rome. Two coins, it means that you're going to fall in love with a beautiful Italian. Even though I'm still nervous, I'm getting more confident, so whenever the camera's pointed at me, um, I know what to do. Rather, at the beginning, I was just really scared of the camera altogether. Yana, too, has been scared of the camera, but now she has the added stress of an audience watching her perform her piece in front of the Pantheon. Italy has got the full most large population in Europe with 68 million people and 3 million of those in Rome. 98% of Italians are Roman Catholic. And with the extra pressure, her language problems come rushing back. Catholic. 98% of Italians are Roman Catholic. Behind me is Phantom, the most famous building of Catholic religion. Huck. There's just people around me, I can't do it. Actually, full of presentation in full of camera, uh, when there's a lot of people watching me at the same time. Sorry. Yeah, and watching all the mistakes I do. The Phantom is 43.3 metres in diameter, and it's 43.3 metres high, and it's in perfect circle. I think we should go and check it out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quite nerve-wracking. Thank you for so many people around you just watching you when you do mistakes and everything. Oh, wow. Once inside the Pantheon, you are struck by the sheer height of the dome above. It is even said that when it rains, you won't get wet under the opening as the rain will evaporate before it hits. Out of the heater and into the ice box. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot hear you past my frozen eardrums. After an early start at the fish markets, the Tokyo crew still has a full day to immerse themselves in the Japanese culture. If you're looking for real traditional Japanese eating, just take about 100 feet off the road and you'll find this place. Today we're going to be trying a traditional Japanese style lunch. Which means that we're going to be sitting on the floor and hopefully we're going to be able to work our way to the menu. Thank you. The most interesting part? It's all in Japanese. <laughs> we could be ordering anything from raw squid to plain rice. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Do you understand a little English? A little bit? No, no fish? Okay, what about 
Despite Heather's apparently fluent Japanese, they have no idea how to read the menu. This is rice. <laughs> I've never seen anything. And decide to make a run for it. Oh, my legs are killing me. Karaoke is now the fourth most popular form of entertainment in Japan. And there are over 100,000 karaoke boxes, just like this one. TV and we're strolling down the street of Paris. One of the most important things you must know while being a travel host is your audience. To test how versatile the girls can be, they must write their own three pieces to camera in one location. Each one is aimed at a different audience. Let's see how they go. Hey girls, so this is another one Rome crew is the first to attempt this task. The girls need to first sample the wares and then write their pieces, designed for three different audiences. First style is for the young traveller, but Natalie might need to pay more attention to where she is travelling. But the most original one is still <laughs> You're going, you're, and you're, you're going to Let's hope Yana's more successful. There's nothing more Italian than eating a pizza in Rome. Tonight, we are in a great little restaurant I found called Poppy Poppy, and I hear the locals say it's one of the best. The next requirement is a more serious style for an adult audience. Pizza was considered the peasant's meal for centuries. It originated from King Umberto and Queen Margarita. One of the things Italy is known for is pizza. And in Rome, there's plenty of restaurants that has got a flavor for every taste. And finally, a piece for a kid's show, which requires a lot more enthusiasm. Today we're going to show you how to make pizza and why it's so healthy for you. I like the kids thing as well um, because it shows something, you know, about my personality that I haven't been able to show before, like you have to be more bubbly. So you need to know the ingredients, which is flour, water, eggs and a little bit of salt. The kids want to be more like, kind of, smiley and cheerful and get them excited, yeah. Did you know that the colors of pizza resemble the Italian flag? Tomatoes for the red, cheese for the white, and basil for the green. Are you getting hungry? In Paris, Paul has his next task for Susie, and he's expecting a big reaction. Coincidence, hey? Because I had no idea. And, uh, and then yesterday, you're like, I want to go there. I'm like, mm, well, that, that'll be fun. We've just told Susie that she's going to do the cabaret. She flipped out, so I expected that. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm just, I'm over the moon. It could, it could be better. I'm so excited about interviewing the dancers. That's just going to be incredible. And then seeing the show as well, it's just more than anything I could have hoped for. Are you so happy you're crying? <laughs> <laughs> If I had to choose my own task, believe it or not, it would have been going to the Lido and going backstage. I had kind of dreamed and wished and hoped about that. It's such a blessing to, to be a host and to actually get to interview someone that you're an idol, that you idolize, or some, some, you know, something you're interested in. Not surprisingly, with her constant complaining, the crew has learned to block Stacy out. Bonjour. I am standing on the Champs-Élysées outside the Lido, one of the most famous cabaret reviews in Paris. I am so excited because tonight, not only do we get to see the show, we are going backstage to meet some of the performers in all their sequined glory. Although Susie always gives 100%, her genuine enthusiasm for this task is obvious. I'm here with an Aussie dancer called Shay, so we'll just interrupt her makeup session. How long have you been performing in the Lido for? 
for five and a half years. Five and a half years. What kind of requirements are there that you have to fulfill? Um, first of all, there's a height requirement. The minimum height is 175 centimetres. Um, all of the dancers have to have a certain amount of classical training and have to um, fill the physical requirements. So obviously, you have to be quite slim and well trained and well disciplined. Is there singing in the show? We do have a live singer, yes. Yes, it's the only show in Paris that has a live singer. Well, good luck in your show tonight. Thank you very much. And yeah, the show. Opened in 1946, the Lido was one of Paris's most famous cabaret shows, up there with Moulin Rouge. Famous for glitz and glamour, this show has over 600 costume changes. Of dancing horses, too. Fuck, you guys have got shit everywhere. In Rome, the girls get ready to party, and despite being spread across the world, all of the other crews find themselves thinking the same thing time to drink. Actually, I think we had too many drinks, rather than two drinks. Mind you, I think I drank four bottles or something. I got really drunk easily. Two couple of bars. Uh, got drunk because we needed to. Why are you saying cheese in Japanese? Nobody too much to drink. Come by. We all got pretty smashed. Uh, long story short, everyone got rather drunk. Paul um, had a few drinks. I love the beer. I'm a bit of a beer um, lover. After that, the night gets a little bit shady. I'm not surprised that anyone got extremely drunk. We all had a ball. But Paul may be wishing he didn't have so much. I was feeling pretty sick. He needs to not drink if he can't handle his alcohol. Next time on Travel Girls. Paul had a hangover and we'd get out of bed. Wakey, wakey! So I'm gonna have a go at trying to get this happening on schedule. Let's roll. I've got another task for you, which is the navigation task. We know where we're going. We know where we're going. We were just parking like For 40 fucking year olds, I took that big day at night. I just find it funny rather than like embarrassing. I